so we are in uh, tutorial 14th which is uh, first order circuits so here we are going to discuss the rc circuit and rl circuit first order rc circuit and first order rl circuit so first few problems uh, we are going to discuss on rc circuit and then we will take the rl circuit the first problem is determine the time constant of the network so in this particular network you can see that the source is basically a dc source so we have a dc source and we have two registers r and 2r and one capacitor c their values are not given we have to determine the time constant in symbolic form there is a switch which is uh, closing at time t equal to zero uh, in the transient problem first order or second order circuit the calculation of time constant tau is very important so the first problem is how you are going to calculate the time constant for the network. So let us see how to do that. We have studied the Thevenin's theorem. So here in order to calculate the value of tau that is the time constant we have to apply the Thevenin's equivalent property. So Thevenin's theorem says that in order to determine the R equivalent at the load terminal so here the load terminal basically means the capacitor terminal so you are going to remove the capacitor with an open circuit and you are going to short circuit the voltage source and open circuit the current source here in this problem we have a independent we have an independent uh, voltage source so that source we are replacing it with short circuit and then we are trying to determine the value of R equivalent in the network. If we have a current source, then you need to determine the, uh, you need to form the open circuit connection. So what is the R Thevenin at the load terminal? The load terminal being the capacitor terminal. So you will be getting the parallel combination of the two registers, one with value R and another is 2R. So the R Thevenin is 2 by 3 R. Once you have got the R Thevenin, the tau formula for the RC network. So this is for the RC network is R Thevenin into the capacitor at which the terminal where you are going to determine the value of tau. So the tau that is the time constant is 2 by 3 RC and the unit is in time that is in second. So this is the first problem. Second problem. In the given circuit, the initial capacitor voltage is 4 volt. Now you can see that in this particular network, we do not have any independent sources. There is no external independent sources. So it means that the circuit comes under the category of natural response. So we have to calculate the natural response of the circuit. If you have some external sources then it is the force response here we have a capacitor and a register where the capacitor is having initial capacitor voltage of 4 volt which is the natural response of the circuit uh, we have to obtain because of this 4 volt which is present in the capacitor the capacitor is of 5 microfarad and the register is of 5 ohms the switch S1 is closed at time t equal to 0. So at time t equal to 0, the switch is closed. Find the charge which is lost by the capacitor from time t 25 microsecond to 100 microsecond. So you need to determine the charge which is lost by the capacitor at time between 25 microsecond to 100 microsecond. When the switch will be closed, then the voltage which is present in the capacitor its energy will be dissipated in the register. So what is the total charge that is lost by the capacitor between two time instant that is 25 microsecond to 100 microsecond. So the first step is to determine the time constant. Here we do not have any other uh, registers apart from 5 ohms. So the R Thevenin at the capacitor terminal will be equal to 5 ohms. Now the uh, tau is the product of R into C which is 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 and the unit is in second. Minus 6 is coming due to the microfarad. Now the current you know that the natural response 
uh, of the RC circuit when there is a natural response we need to calculate then the formula for the current is V by R e to the power minus T by tau. This is the natural response of the network. We have been given the value of the register. So here you have the R theming voltage. Initial voltage is 4 volt. So this is equal to V naught which is 4 by 5 e to the power minus t by tau, tau you have already calculated. Now, the charge which is lost by the capacitor is basically the integral of the current from the time 25 microsecond to 100 microsecond. So, you will be getting how much charge is basically lost by the capacitor between two time instant when the switch is closed. Third problem, now in this network you can see that there are two switches one is S1 and another is S2. There are two switch in the network. It has been told that the switch was closed, S1 was closed, this one was closed and the other one was open for a very long time before the switching action has taken place. And time t equal to zero when the switching action has taken place, the S1 switch is opened where S2 is closed. So the reverse operation has taken place at time t equal to 0. Determine the voltage across the capacitor at time t equal to 5 microsecond. Now what we have to do is that before the switching operation that is at time t equal to 0 minus you have the before the switching operation and at time t equal to 0 plus that is after the switching instant you have to determine the network. Also, you have to determine the network at time t equal to infinity. The time t equal to infinity means that it is a steady state. The transient has all decayed out. So, let us see how to solve this problem. We have to determine the voltage across the capacitor. Now, one more thing you have to observe in the network is that how many energy storage elements are there. So, here we can see that only one energy storage element is there. So the problem lies in the first order circuit. If you have the combination of inductor or capacitor or two capacitor or two inductors, which cannot be reduced in a simple format, that is L equivalent or C equivalent, we can say that it is a first order problem. Else it can be a second order problem also. So the first thing you need to observe that what type of problem is this? So this is my original circuit. Now, I have to determine two individual uh, circuit at time t equal to 0 minus and time t equal to infinite. Let us see what is happening. So, it has been told that for a uh, before the switching action, your switch S1 was closed. So, your switch S1 was closed that is the current will flow through the switch whereas S2 is basically opened. So S2 was open at time t equal to 0 minus. So this is my circuit at time t equal to 0 minus. Whereas at time t equal to infinite, infinite, what we can say that the switch S2 is now closed whereas S1 is open. So this is the network. Now we are in a time instant minus infinity that is a very long time to 0 where the switching has taken place and from 0 to infinity. So both these extreme ends are or the time total time duration this one is basically under the steady state here the transient has taken place. So when uh, the time was 0 minus if you can see that the capacitor will behave as an open circuit because it is under the steady state. So capacitor will be open circuit. Now what is the voltage across the capacitor at time t equal to 0 minus that is just before the switching has taken place. So here we have 1 volt battery. So I can say that 1 volt is the voltage across the capacitor at the steady state time from before just before the switching has taken place. Whereas at time t equal to infinite when uh, we have the other circuit also the steady state has reached. Now what is the voltage at time t equal to infinite? Now here we have a 3 volt source. Now you see in this particular network due to open of the switch this part of the network was disconnected from the circuit. Only this part of the network was 
there and it is a type of natural response. Whereas here, if you can see that there is a three volt source which is coming and this part of the network is basically disconnected because the switch S1 is open. So the voltage across the two ohm register will be the voltage across the capacitor. So we can apply the voltage division rule that is the supply voltage is 3. Uh, in on the numerator you will be having the register across which your voltage has to be determined and on the denominator we will be having the sum of all the registers in the network. So we have 2 volt at voltage infinite time or the steady state time. Now what we are going to do is that first we need to determine the time constant as usual. So time constant is basically R thevening multiplied with the capacitor. So after the switching action, when the switching action has taken place at the capacitor terminal, so this is after the switching. So after the switching, you can see that what is the uh, R thevening of the network. So I can determine the R thevening. I will be sorting this voltage source and I will be open circuiting the capacitor terminal. Then I can determine the R thevening which is equal to 2 by 3. So once we have determined R thevening, the capacitor is of 10 microfarad. So I can get the value of tau. Now the fundamental equation to determine the transient voltage or the voltage at all time t is basically given by this equation. This is valid for the voltage as well as for the current. That is the voltage across the capacitor at all time t is equal to voltage of the capacitor at time 0 plus minus voltage of the capacitor at infinite e to the power minus t by tau plus voltage of the capacitor at infinite or this is known as the steady state. So here you have the steady state. Now steady state voltage infinite is basically 2 volt so we are going to substitute here. The voltage 0 plus will be equal to the voltage at 0 minus. Why? Because the capacitor will not allow a sudden change in the voltage. So here you have 1 volt so that is the voltage of capacitor at 0 plus. So infinite you have already 2 volt so we are completing this equation at all time t. Now the question was asked that at time t equal to 5 microsecond what is the capacitor voltage we have to just substitute the value of the time as 5 microsecond we will get what is the capacitor voltage so it is 1.52 volt next problem here the switch in the figure has been closed for a very long time so first the switch was closed and then at time t equal to 0 the switch is open determine the voltage V of T for all time T greater than 0. It means that when the switch is open after that, what is the voltage of the capacitor? Let us see what is happening. So first we need to determine the initial voltage of the capacitor. What is happening at the initial voltage? So the switch was closed for a very long duration of the time. So if we close this switch, for a long duration of a time, the capacitor will be open circuit. So the capacitor will be open circuit. Now the voltage V0 across the capacitor terminal will be the same voltage which is present across the 2 kilo ohm register. So I can apply the voltage division rule in this network. So I will be having a voltage of 4 volt uh, across the register or across the capacitor. Now when the switch is opened, this part of the network is disconnected from the circuit. Only this part of the network is there and I see that it is a category of natural response because whatever the voltage is present in the capacitor that will be dissipated in the register of 2 kilo ohms. I know the voltage equation for the natural response of the network for a RC network. So we have V0 e to the power minus t by tau. So here the tau is basically the time constant which is equal to Rc or R thevening into capacitor. Here R thevening will be 2 kilo ohms and capacitor is 40 microfarad. So we will get 2 by 25 second as the time constant. Now we can determine what is the voltage equation putting the value of the tau here 
and the V0 here. So we'll get 4e to the power minus 12.5t as the voltage for all time t greater than or equal to 0 because how the capacitor voltage will be fluctuating with respect to time t after the switch is opened. Now in this uh, circuit you have to determine the voltage V0 of t for all time t greater than 0 determine the time necessary for the capacitor voltage to decay to one third of its value at time t equal to 0. So we have to determine what is the time uh, which is necessary for the capacitor voltage to decay to one third. Now you see the switching action is taking place at time t equal to 0. The arrow symbol is given in this direction. So it is basically opening of the switch. If the arrow symbol is given in this direction, it is means closing of the switch. So here you have the opening of the switch at time t equal to 0. Let us see what is happening. So what happened before time t equal to 0? So before time t equal to 0, your switch was closed. So if the switch is closed, then what is the voltage across this capacitor? So this is similar to the previous problem. Here it will be open circuit. So because at time t equal to infinite, uh, it will reach to the steady state and we can apply the voltage division rule here to find what is the voltage, initial voltage across the capacitor. Then time t greater than zero, the switch is open now. So if the switch is open, so this part of the network is disconnected and we have only this uh, register capacitor in the circuit. We can determine the time constant, which is the product of RC and that is equal to 0 0.06 second. The equation for the voltage is V0 e to the power minus T by tau. So we will be getting the voltage across the capacitor. After that, the question was asked that the voltage is reduced to one third and time T equal to T0. So let us determine what is this time. What is this time when the voltage is reduced to one third? Now here, the equation of 9e to the power minus 16.67 t is basically the voltage for all time t. So here you have the time t. So we will be substituting the value of time t naught here. We'll, we have to determine the time t naught. Now the voltage is reduced to one third. So if the voltage is reduced to one third, we have to put it in that formula to determine what is the time constant by taking it on the natural logarithmic which is there because of this exponential term we have to convert that into logarithmic and do mathematical computation to determine the time so these type of problems often occur when we need to determine what voltage or what current is basically at a particular instant of time determine the current through the capacitor so here you see you have a capacitor here now let us see the source so there is a voltage source and there is a current source the voltage source and current source both are the function of time t okay so both voltage and current are function of time t you need to determine the current which is flowing through the capacitor for all time t so what we have to do is that because this circuit is uh, having two sources and one register and capacitor can we apply the source transformation here if we apply the source transformation in the network what we can do is that we have a voltage source and a register which is in series i can convert that in a current source and a register in parallel where current is basically voltage by resistance now in the next step what we can do is that here we have a current source here and this one also there is a current source so these two current source we can add up and find the equivalent current source so one is upward direction another is downward direction so the net current source if we are considering it in the upward direction we can consider that it is sin 5t minus cos of 5t and we have a register of two ohms so this two ohm register which is coming in parallel here is being positioned here now there is a capacitor across which we need to determine the current 
So this circuit is minimized to this circuit using source transformation. Now what we can do is that uh, we have to determine the current so further we can reduce this part of the network. We can have a voltage source in series with a resistance. So voltage is basically current multiplied with the resistance V equal to I into R. Right? So here uh, we are converting this uh, voltage source into the current source into the equivalent voltage source and then we have only one single loop problem where I need to determine what is the current which is flowing through the capacitor. So the current flowing through the capacitor can be calculated if we can determine the impedance of the network. Now here we have a register and one capacitor. So at a particular frequency what is uh, the equivalent impedance. Now uh, seeing this voltage source I can say that omega that is the frequency is equal to 5. Omega will be equal to 5 from this network. So uh, putting the value of omega here I can find what is the impedance. Once I have found out the impedance I can find what is the current which is flowing in the network. Current is basically voltage by the impedance. So current will be equal to voltage by impedance. So voltage is a complex quantity and impedance is also a complex quantity. So that will give you the current which is also a function of time t in the complex domain. So here you see we have applied the concept of impedance to determine the current and also we have applied the source transformation. Next problem. The capacitor shown in the figure is initially charged to 10 volt. So here we have a capacitor which is charged to 10 volt. The switch closes at time t equal to 0. So before that the switch was opened and it is closing at time t equal to 0. Find the capacitor voltage at time 10 millisecond. So what is the capacitor voltage at time t uh, 10 millisecond. So this is the problem of natural response because we do not have any independent sources in the network. So once uh, uh, we know the basic equation of the capacitor voltage, the series RC network under the natural response condition that is V0 e to the power minus T by tau. We have to determine the value of tau which is RC then we will be getting the equation for the capacitor voltage. Now at time T 10 millisecond what is the capacitor voltage just you have to substitute the value of time t equal to 10 millisecond. You will get the capacitor voltage as 3.678 volt. So this is natural response. In the problem of RC network, we have to observe whether we are solving it for natural response or we are solving it for forced response. Here this equation will change if the problem belongs to the category of forced response. So here we have the capacitor which is initially charged to 10 coulomb. Now you see it is not given in volt, it is given in coulomb, the charge. The current in the circuit for one second after the switch is closed will be. So what is the current which is flowing in the circuit after one second that we have to determine. So we have a 100 volt DC source, we have a 0 0.5 capacitor and 2 ohm register. The switch is closed at time t equal to 0. So at time t equal to 0 the switch is closed. So the voltage before the switching action has taken place and the voltage after the switching action has taken place for a momentary time will be equal because the capacitor will not allow sudden change in the voltage which is equal to charge divided by the capacitance of the network. Charge is given to be 10 coulomb divided by the capacitance so that is equal to 20 volt. So this is a different way of determining the initial voltage. So charge is already given to us so we can determine from the uh, voltage of the capacitor. Voltage at infinite that is the steady state will be equal to the source voltage which is equal to 100 volt. Now the basic equation we know and this problem lies in the category of force response. So this problem is force response because we have a independent sources in the circuit. Now the voltage at infinite plus voltage 0 plus minus voltage at infinite e to the power minus t by tau is the fundamental equation of the capacitor voltage. We have to substitute each quantity. So voltage infinite is 100 volt. 
voltage at 0 plus will be equal to 20 volt and the value of tau RC we need to calculate from the network. So once we have calculated we will get the voltage. Now the current is basically C dB by dt. So we have to determine what is the current after one second. So I need to determine the current from the voltage equation. So I am getting the equation 40 e to the power minus t. This is the current equation which is a function of time t. If you substitute the time is one second you will be getting the answer for the current that is 14.71 ampere is the current which is flowing in the network after one second. Now in this problem the initial charges in the one farad capacitor present in the circuit shown is zero. There is no initial charge present in the capacitor. Find the energy in joules transformed from the DC source until the steady state condition is reached. So we have a DC source 10 volt. We have to find what is the energy which is transformed from the DC source until the steady state is reached. So what we can do is that these network of so many registers can we obtain the R equivalent of this then the problem will be simple. So we have a R equivalent and we have a capacitor with a voltage source. Why this problem is challenging is this is not easy straightforward to determine this R equivalent. Now let us see why it is. So when we talk whether these 5 ohm and these 5 ohm are in series or parallel. If I say that this is one node and this is one node which are the same node because it is uh, on the same wire. The other node if we see this is not the same. Usually how the parallel operation is there? You, If you have two registers and that other end of the two registers are touching the same node. So here you have node N1 here you have node N2. Now here there is a node N1 but these two nodes are not the same. These two nodes are different. So I can't say that this 5 ohm and this 5 ohm registers are in parallel. Okay. So the series parallel combination will not operate here. Okay. The series parallel combination to obtain the R equivalent will not be valid. Uh, to obtain that. So how do we uh, determine the R equivalent in that case? This is the first challenge. Uh, if we can track this, then the circuit will be simple. So we have already studied the delta to start transformation that we can apply. So we can, we can see that if we take this one, this node, this is the other node and this is the third node. So here our circuit is like this. So we have a delta. So if I mark this one as terminal A, this is terminal B and this is terminal C. So this is at terminal A, this is at terminal B and this is at terminal C. So all the registers are basically 5 ohms. So all the registers are 5 ohms. Now if I determine an equivalent star from this network, then it will be easy for me to determine these registers. So all these registers will be also equal. So let us consider this one is X. So this register will be equal. Now from the B end, I can find that there is a register of 5 ohms which is grounded. Another C, there is a 5 ohm which is grounded. So if I have obtained this X value from delta to star conversion, then I can have these x ohms and 5 ohms will be in series. Now my network will be like this. So the star connection, this one will be x and this one will be x plus 5. This one also will be x plus 5. Now my network will be simple. So here we have the ground connection. These two are in ground. So I can say that these x plus 5 and this x plus 5, they are in parallel. So we can obtain this one will be x plus 5 divided by 2 which will be in series with x. So I can get the equivalent resistance of the network from delta to star conversion. So that will come to be 5 ohms. So this one will be 5 by 3. Okay. So it will come as 5 ohms 
and then our network will be simple where we have a voltage source, a capacitor and a register in the network and the problem lies in the category of forced response because we have a 10 volt source in the network. So the first challenge was to obtain the R equivalent of this network. Once we have determined the R equivalent, we can determine the value of tau that is R equivalent into the capacitor. Uh, we are having 5 second because the capacitor is 1 farad. Now the current equation is V by R e to the power minus T by tau. We will be getting the current equation and then the energy we can find out in terms of the integral of the power. So power is basically voltage into current. So this current will be multiplied with the voltage and then we can integrate the power to find the energy. So energy will be equal to 100 joules. So the fundamental concept we are uh, combining with the transient conditions with the circuit problem. Next problem, find the energy which is absorbed by the 4 ohm in the time interval 0 to infinite given condition is that the capacitor voltage is 6 volt. So this capacitor voltage is at the initial condition is 6 volt and uh, we have to determine from 0 to infinite. It means all time we have to determine. So the equation uh, of the current, the fundamental equation of the current is IC of T is equal to IC of infinite, IC 0 plus minus IC infinite e to the power minus T by tau. Given condition is that the capacitor voltage uh, in the initial condition will be equal to and the transient condition 0 minus and 0 plus will be equal to 6 volt. These are the given condition. I will be drawing the three different network for this circuit. So for this circuit, I will be having a time t greater than 0 when the transient has taken place. Time t is greater than uh, 0 plus and time t equal to infinite that is the steady state. What is happening at this all particular time? So first I am determining tau is equal to RC of the network. So register is 4 ohm and capacitor is 2 farad. So I will be getting 8 second as the time constant. What is the current which is flowing at 0 plus? So the current which is flowing at 0 plus is basically the delta V divided by the resistance. So I am having 10 volt and 6 volt which is subtracting the potential difference and divided with the resistance I will be having 1 ampere as the current. At infinite I will be having the capacitor to be open circuit and no current will be flowing in the open circuit. So the current will be equal to 0. So IC infinite which we will be putting it here and IC 0 plus we are going to put it here tau value we are going to put it from 8 second. So once we have got that I will be substituting all this in the equation of the current. Now here we, you, you see that uh, we have a capacitor of 2 farad. Now this capacitor the voltage initial voltage is 6 volt so I have replaced that in the form of the voltage source. I have replaced the capacitor as a voltage source and that is what I see 0 plus. So here we are getting the current equation for all time T. Now once I am getting the current I can form the power equation which is I square R or the energy which is integral of the power. Now we, are done, we have been given the current so I square into R into DT we are getting, getting the energy. So on substituting from 0 to infinity uh, as the integral, uh, definite integral, we are getting 16 joules as the energy of the uh, transformed in the capacitor. Now we have done with RC circuit, we have solved few problems. Now let us concentrate on RL circuit now. The first problem in RL circuit, you can see that there is an inductor here. So the initial current which is present in the inductor is 10 ampere. Calculate the current I of T and Ix of T. I of T means what is the current which is flowing in the inductor? What is the current which is flowing in this register? You see in this network, there is only one dependent uh, source that is 3i. There is no independent sources in the network. So the problem lies in the category of natural response. If you have any independent source, then it is forced response. We will solve this problem using two different methods. Method 1 let us see first and then we will go for method 2. 
method one is first we will determine the value of r thevenin now here we have a dependent current source dependent voltage source we know that to whenever we have a dependent source in the problem we have to connect one volt or one ampere at the load terminal so here the capacitor terminal is the load terminal that we have to take care now we need to determine the value of r equivalent that is the r thevenin by voltage by current this we have discussed in a lot uh, when we have discussed the thevenin theorem how to determine the r thevenin when you have a dependent source in the network so here we are uh, applying some mass analysis to get the value of r equivalent so the tau is basically l by r equivalent now the formula of tau for the rl network is basically l divided by r equivalent which is r thevenin earlier the problem was earlier the formula was tau is equal to rc when you were dealing with rc network so please remember the formula has now little bit change here it is in it is a product here it is you are taking the inverse of r equivalent so the current equation i of t is i naught e to the power minus t by tau so the initial current which is present in the inductor is 10 ampere and we have determined the value of tau then we can get the current equation for all time t greater than zero so this is the first method second method is that we can go directly from the differential equation concept so if we take i1 and i2 as the two current which is flowing in the mess I, I need not to determine the value of r thevenin okay i'm not i'm not determining r thevenin rather what i'm doing is that i'm applying the kvl equation in the two mess two mess we have we are applying the kvl equation in the differential form so voltage uh, across the inductor will be equal to l di by dt that we are going to apply so once we are going to apply that then we can form the first order differential equation so this is the first order differential equation in the most standard format so if we can write uh, the equation as a first order differential equation i can get the value of the current so the current equation i'm getting for all time t greater than zero so here we are not going by r thevenin method rather we are going by differential method so once we are getting the i of t by any of the method now we can determine what is the voltage across the inductor which is equal to ldi by dt so we can differentiate the current which we have got it and to determine the voltage now the voltage across the inductor and voltage across the register will be equal because both are in parallel so i can determine what is the current which is flowing through the uh, register which is equal to inductor voltage divided by the register value so first i have determined the current which is flowing through the inductor then i have determined the inductor voltage and then i have determined the volt current through the register by voltage of the inductor divided by the resistance of that register through which we have to determine it so this is the sequence by which this problem is solved so determining this current i of t is determined either by r thevenin method or by differential equation method any of the method you can adopt problem 12 the switch has been closed for a very long time at time t equal to zero the switch is open so you can see that time t the switch is open you have to determine the current for all time t greater than zero i can see there is only one inductor in the circuit and there is a voltage source of 40 volt in the network so this problem lies for first order now we have to analyze whether this lies in the problem of natural response or force response because sometime it will be natural sometime it will be forced depending upon whether the source is connected in the network or not so let us see for time t less than zero what is that the switch is closed so we are closing this switch so this switch is closed for time t less than zero then the inductor will be short circuit under the steady state condition inductor will be short okay if the inductor is short you remember when uh, we discussed the capacitor capacitor was open now the inductor is short circuited for the steady state 
it means the register 16 ohms will be also short circuited so my uh, circuit is like this inductor is short the 16 ohms is also short so i am getting a new circuit this one which is having a 40 volt and registers combination so the r equivalent we have to determine for this network which is the parallel combination of 12 and 4 which is in series with 2 ohms the current i1 that is the source current coming from the 40 volt is basically 8 amps then the current which is flowing here because this is the inductor terminal so the current which is flowing here we can determine using the current division rule or the voltage division rule as it is any of the theorem we can apply what is the current which is flowing in the network so this is at time t less than zero now what we can do is that inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current we have seen that capacitor do not allow a sudden change in voltage here inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current so i of zero plus and i of zero minus will be equal which is equal to six amps now, uh, now new network for here, we have this, this, this switch is open, so this part of the network is disconnected. So we have a, a network which is the combination of register and inductor. So here we have two Henry inductor and the registers. We have to determine the current for all time t greater than zero. So inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current so we have 6 amps as the inductor current now this problem lies in the category of natural response because whatever the current which is present in the inductor that is driving the network this problem lies in the category of force response because you have an independent source now we have to determine the current so current is i naught e to the power minus t by tau the initial current is 6 we have to determine the value of tau which is equal to l by r thevenin so we will be uh, open circuiting this inductor terminal and then we will determine what is the r thevenin at the inductor terminal so at the inductor terminal you determine what is the r thevenin you will get the value of tau now the value of the current for all time t greater than 0 we have got it so this is the current at all time t less than 0 13th problem you have to determine the current i naught which is the current flowing through the register the voltage v naught which is the voltage across the 3 ohm register and the current i which is the current through the inductor assuming the switch was open for a very long duration of the time so there is a switch which was initially open and then it was closed so what is happening at time t less than zero that is before the switching the switch was open so this switch is open circuit this switch is open circuit if it is open circuit it means this part of the network will not be there and the inductor will be short circuited because the steady state has reached for a long duration of the time so inductor is short it means the 6 ohm register is also short the 6 ohm register will also be short if the 6 ohm register is short what is happening in the network so uh, sorry uh, because this switch is open only this part of the network will be open circuit this part will be there uh, i just misconcept so this is open circuit and this inductor terminal is short circuit so this one is also short circuit okay and this is open circuit uh, because the switch is open now what is happening to the initial amount of the current so initial amount of the current i naught which is flowing is basically zero now the current at time t for all time t less than zero is basically we can apply the circuit problem here to determine that so we will be having three and two ohms in series and that we have 10 so 10 divided by 2 plus 3 will have 2 amps as the current which is flowing in the network so this is the current which is flowing so the voltage v naught that is across the 3 ohm register is equal to 3 multiplied with the current because this is a series current which is equal to 6 volt and this current which is flowing through the register because it is already short 
it is already short so whatever it is short so the same current is flowing here it is already a wire so that is equal to 2 amps now after that when the switch is closed so switch now it is closed if the switch is closed here what is happening now the switch is closed here so it is a short circuit now this is the inductor terminal we have to determine the r thevenin at the inductor terminal so we have to keep it open this one will be open circuit at the inductor terminal and we have to determine the r thevenin so these 3 ohms and 6 ohms will be in parallel so that is equal to 2 ohms so tau is equal to l by r thevenin which is equal to 1 second now the current equation it now here the problem lies the category of natural response we do not have any independent source so it is equal to i naught e to the power minus t by tau the initial current i naught is equal to 2 which we can substitute here and tau is 1 second so that is tau for all time t greater than 0 the current equation now we have to determine the voltage v naught now here the voltage v naught whatever the voltage is here that will be the negative of the inductor voltage the reason being is that whatever the voltage vl is here the same voltage will be here vl and if we apply the kvl equation in this loop then this voltage and this voltage will be uh, opposite to each other so the inductor voltage is ldi by dt we differentiate the current we will get the voltage for all time t greater than zero so this is the solution uh, for the current now we can determine what is the current which is flowing in the register so what is the current which is flowing in the register that is inductor voltage vl divided by the register value 6 because these two are in parallel now i can combine all the current all the voltage and all the current for the register and the capacitor to get the values for all time t less than zero all time t greater than zero for the uh, this one is for the register current this one is 3 ohm register voltage and this one is the inductor current so we have combined everything which is the function of time t problem 14 at time t equal to zero the switch s1 is closed so there are two switches s1 and s2 s1 is closed and s2 is closed after four seconds now you see that closing of the switch is a little bit delayed that is four seconds find i of t for time t greater than 0 and also calculate i for time t 2 second and 5 second so this problem is little bit different because here the switch 2 is closed little bit uh, a duration of the time so let us divide the interval at time t less than 0 time t from 0 to 4 because at 4 uh, second the switch is s2 is changed and time t greater than 4 seconds so we have divided the three time intervals time t less than 0 what is happening s1 and s2 are open so both s1 and s2 are open at time t less than 0 if both are open then there is no current flowing in the network so current i that is flowing through the inductor will be 0 because no current is flowing through the inductor and inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current so all the conditions will be zero now this time let us concern, concentrate from zero to four zero to four what is happening switch s1 is closed this one will be closed four ohms and six ohms are in series now these four ohms and six ohms are in series because the s2 is actually open so s2 is open between zero to four so you are having both are in series now you can determine that if the s1 is closed forever the current which is flowing at time, uh, through the inductor that is under the steady state condition you will be having these two registers in series uh, that will be divided with 40 volt so we will be having 4 ampere as the current which is flowing here r thevenin will be the series combination 4 plus 6 that is 10 ohms and tau is equal to l by r Thevenin. so we are getting 1 by 2 second it means because we have a 40 volt source and these two registers are there and current is flowing like this we are having a force response problem so this is the fundamental equation we can substitute i infinite i0 and tau and we are getting 
for time t 0 to 4 second. So we have already got uh, for time t less than 0, we have got for time t 0 to 4. Now the third time instant is time greater than equal to 4 second. Now the switching S2 is basically taking place at 4 second. So what is happening at time t greater than 4 second? S2 is closed now. So this S2 is closed now and 10 volt source now will be connected in the network. This 10 volt source will be now in the network. The sudden change does not affect the inductor current but the inductor do not allow a sudden change in the current so these voltage will not change anything in the inductor current because the current will not change abruptly. Now the current you see at the time instant 4 minus and 4 plus I will take 4 minus or 4 plus will be equal to the same current which we have got it at from time t 0 to 4 okay so this is what now if I substitute time equal to 4 second here because here we were having minus 80 if we substitute uh, minus 40 if we substitute that we will having normally equal to 4 ampere as the initial current of this inductor at 4 second now after that at infinite what is happening this switch is closed this one is open so this is disconnected and this is basically short circuited this is short circuited now we can apply the KCL equation at this node P to determine the current uh, voltage which is there. So the voltage at node P we can apply the KCL to get the voltage and then the time infinite the voltage divided by the register value 6 will be the current which is flowing. So here you have the 6 ohms and we have got this voltage P network so we can determine voltage P divided by 6 as the current which is flowing at time t equal to infinite. Thevenin resistance will be equal to the parallel combination of 4 and 2. So this will 4 and 2 will be in parallel and then it will be in series with 6. So that is equal to 22 by 3. Then you can determine the tau which is equal to L by R Thevenin. Once we have determined the tau, I can put it in the equation for all time t greater than or equal to 4 second. Now here you see we have studied the step response. So here we have t by t minus 4 because we are calculating for all time t greater than or equal to 4. And here i naught is basically i of 4. Now we can substitute that in the equation or value of i infinite, i4 and the value of tau, we will be getting the equation of the current i of t. Now we put all this together, all this, that is time t less than 0, time t from 0 to 4 second and time t greater than 4 second to get the current equation. Once we have got that, we will be getting at time t equal to 2 second. So 2 second will fall somewhere between 0 to 4 so this equation will be used to determine the current to time t equal to 5 second will fall somewhere between uh, greater than 4. So this equation will be used to get that. So I5 will be 3.02. So appropriately we have to choose the equation to determine the current here. So this completes the first order uh, problem based on RC circuit and RL circuit.